Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer has unveiled six key pledges which he said will form the first steps towards Labour policy in government. Now, the announcement comes after Prime Minister Rishi Sunak outlined his five main targets last January. And we're joined now by Shadow Science and Technology Secretary Peter Kyle, who I assume does know what a tech bro is. Uh, and we're going to talk to you about how those uh, pledges landed in just a moment in terms of convincing people. But interestingly, what we did is we took Labour pledges out, uh, out and about, and also Conservative pledges out and about to, to check people's reactions to it. And extraordinarily, the huge majority couldn't even tell the difference. So do you want to just have a look at what people said and then we'll talk about that afterwards if we can. Reduced debt, is that Conservative or Labour? Labour. It's Conservative. Oh, wow. <laughs> Recruit 6,500 teachers. Um, Labour. Deliver economic stability. Uh, I think that's Conservative. It's Labour. Oh, no way. Halving inflation, Labour or Conservative? Inflation, Labour, of course. Uh, that is, that's Conservative. Uh, it's, uh, they're the same then, they're both the same. <laughs> hmm. So that was Fran Nanori getting those responses. Uh, so, Mr Kyle, crikey, can't even tell the difference. They'll tell the difference should we win the election and get into a position of actually delivering it, Kate, because what we've seen is... The problem is, though, the point of those pledge cards was to help you win the election and to make it clear what was laid out. What we've had is 14 years of the Conservatives actually in government having the opportunity to deliver, and all they've delivered is chaos and instability in our economy and public services. So what we're putting forward is the first steps of a Labour government. Actually, when you look into the detail of it, because, of course, what we outlined yesterday was six steps in very succinct terms, but beneath each one of them is a programme and a set of plans that can actually make them happen. Now, what, we, what we're trying to do and what we're really working so hard at is to earn the trust of voters. And we know we have to earn that trust, which is why we've been working so hard to do so. And not just in recent days, but in the last four years since Sir Keir Starmer became leader of the Labour Party, uh, Peter, so that we can actually reassure people we have the plans we, 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 and, the, and the people that can deliver it. We hear it. you, Peter Carl, but the, the point is that those pledges... Um, don't seem to have any clear blue water between you and the Conservative Party. What did have were the pledges that you dumped. I mean, let's just go through some of them. 28 billion a year spending on green investment dumped, wealth tax dumped, tuition fees, so our poorest, most struggling students uh, still going to uh, remain, and so on and so forth. Nationalisation, you know, something that people really care about. The fact we've only got one lot of water pipes, they're dumping toxic waste into our shared waterways. Nationalisation, 2020, Starmer's, excuse me, Sir Keir Starmer's, 2020 Leadership Manifesto pledge, Public services should be in public hands. Support for common ownership of rail, mail, energy and water. That's a reason to go towards a Labour Party that has a new vision for Britain. Does the Labour Party have that or are you just not the Conservative Party? Every single one of those pledges you read out were made before Vladimir Putin and before Liz Truss wreaked uh, havoc on both the continent of Europe, our economy and our public services domestically uh, in different ways. So when the landscape changes, the Labour Party will adapt to that, that slow circumstances. We're not ideological. We will do what, what is best in the interests of our country in any moment in time. Now, Keir Starmer has been leader of the Labour Party for four years. Sorry, excuse me, did you say you're not ideological? We're not ideological. What did you come we in for will... politics? Sorry, what's the point of being in, in politics unless you, have an, unless you have an ideological vision for how to take the country forward. We are I mean, if you're just by... pragmatic, why don't we hire a bunch of management consultants, Peter Kyle? We are guided by values and principles. Uh, those values and principles put the interests of the whole country first, not just one particular part of it. You saw that with the last Labour government, where we ended up with zero waiting lists for more... For... Nobody was, wait... Nobody was waiting. Forgive me, Toronto. Is it not in the interest of the whole company that we have clean water? Of course it is, and that's why our plan so to tackle and, make, and hold people accountable for it is actually in line with the values and principles of the Labour Party, where we will act in the interest of the entire country. But our plan for water is to hold those people running those mm. companies accountable for it. People will go to jail if they continue to pollute our waterways in the way that they have been. We've put this forward in Parliament and it's been voted against 
by the Conservatives consistently. Now, the first, we are putting forward a prospectus to the country of a decade of national renewal. Now, if we're taking the country on a, on a journey which is in a span, hopefully, a decade, it's right that people know what our first steps are. And those first steps will tackle the real challenges that people face in their daily lives. It'll mean that there's more teachers in the schools. We will set out a, a border security force so that we can tackle the small boats in a, in a way that tackles the whole problem and not just the 1% of the problem that the government are tackling. We'll have a stable economy because the instability has wrecked havoc on our public services and our ability to have an economy that serves everyone. And yes, we will reduce waiting lists and set up GB Energy. Okay. These are the things that will tackle the cost of living challenge, the public service challenge that we have, and an economy that just isn't working for everyone. Look, These are in line with the values and principles of the Labour Party, and we will put them to task for everyone in our country. I can see that it's earnestly felt. I can see that you mean it. I'm sure that you understand how you're going to achieve it. The trouble for you is that the arguments are so similar to the Conservatives at the moment. You know, even when you look at tax, we understand Jeremy Hunt, the Chancellor, is going to come out today and say, you're going to keep tax high. We only put tax up because of the situation with Ukraine, the situation of COVID, paying back things we brought in, which Labour supported at the time, like, you know, the uh, furloughing, things like that. Uh, uh, and then we'll bring it down when we can. Uh, is there a guarantee, because they're accusing you of not, that you would bring tax down again? Our first mission, as you have seen yesterday, and the first step will be to get economic stability and then growth into the economy. When we get that growth, we will make sure... That's what that the we, Conservatives we... are saying are as well, though. Yeah, but look, Susan, I, I just wish once it's, it's that Kate, the Conservative so, sorry, just Party... Just to be clear, sorry, uh, to help you, it's, it's Kate sitting next to me. Oh, Don't sorry, worry. Kate. Adam, you can get sorry. my name wrong. That's yeah. not a problem. Let's get, the, other right. Let's please, get the other things please, right. Please, please <laughs> forgive me, Kate. Uh, Don't uh, worry. I, I, just, I just wish once the Conservative Party would accept responsibility for the way they are running our country. It is the choices they have made that have led to the highest taxation burden on the British public for so 70 years. So was the years. choice to furlough? Was and the choice to do the things in Covid wrong? Because Labour supported that at the time. That's what the Conservatives say has led to the high tax rises. See what I mean? This is why it's hard for and do you. you. See what, do you see what I mean when I say that pre-Covid we had a 50 or 40-year right. high in taxation? It is the choices that they have made. They could have, they could have invested into public services rather than cut them to the bone before COVID. It is Carl, now clearly accepted Peter that, that, that yeah. our, our public services were not ready for, for COVID because Peter of the choices Carl, what, that were made before that. What happened to paying for those public services, amongst other ways, through... Uh, I know you're not ideological, to things like income tax for higher earners, for instance. You know, core labour values. They seem to have disappeared, and this seems to be, you know, less about attracting Labour voters with an ideological view of the world, and one that says, don't worry, the markets uh, and everybody that used to vote Conservative, you're, you're safe with us. You're really just looking for the Conservative swing voters, not thinking about a broad, big vision for the country, right? We have a very big vision for the country. Look, I think you have to understand the world through most people's eyes at the moment. Radical today is somebody who is in pain or has somebody in their family that's in pain, and they can see a doctor within a day or two. That's not happening for most people. Mm -hmm. Radical today is people being able to afford to put food on the table throughout the whole week and know that their kids are going to school and the, the ceiling is not likely to crumble right. on them. Uh, uh, These Car are radical experiences uh, in the okay. economy today right. and we are delivering those first steps that will get a grip back on our country because it's been lost by this Conservative Party. We have public services where 8 million and people Carl, are waiting and for Carl, treatment. In order, to do, just say, in order to do that, you have to have a united party uh, that are going... Um, potentially into government alongside one another. And for that to be united, everybody has to be, you know, delighted or certainly have a way of getting along with one another. Um, Natalie Elphick became a member of the Labour Party. Uh, her comment in 2022 is, if Labour's only policy is to rely on the French, then they're not serious about stopping small boats, tackling criminality, protecting people from smuggling, and so on and so forth. Keir Starmer would be prepared to be, to, excuse me, would be prepared to get tough, or will he, or will he be Mr Softy Strike again? This is the thing she said. She's welcomed with open arms by the Labour Party. Now, a lot of people who are old Labour, let's say, with the values and the ideologies that you say the Labour Party doesn't have anymore. You know, Diane Abbott, for example, Jeremy Corbyn, uh, another example, are uh, not welcome in the Labour Party. Uh, will that remain the case? People have the right to change their mind and look at the circumstances and adapt to it. 
Now, Natalie Elphick has, was in the Conservative Party. She, is, she represents the constituency of Dover, which is at the forefront of the small boats challenge. And she saw from within inside the Conservative Party that their plans simply aren't working, they're not credible, and they don't have the leadership that will deliver the change that the country needs. And then she looked at the Labour proposition and the leadership uh, and the plans, and she saw that it could. So she adapted accordingly. Now, we're in an election period now. We are asking millions of voters to make the same journey that she has made, because we welcome people who have voted Conservative in the past to start looking at uh, Labour and see that we are the party that offers a solution. It would be absurd if we had a, a Conservative MP that we've said we don't want in our party, but yet uh, we want lots of people who voted for the Conservatives not to. She saw so the circumstances no, so, so, and so she no adapted. There's no route back for Jeremy Corbyn, Diane Abbott and the rest. They are very, very different circumstances. And in both cases, there was a fully independent uh, uh, look, look by an independent um, board at the circumstances for which they're, they're affected. It's a very, very different set so of circumstances be a, than sorry, what we've that, That'll welcomed. be a no then? Well, I can't comment because there is an independent process uh, underway looking at the circumstances as to why Diana well, lost the whip in the first place. I'm going to say that's a no or a perhaps a, a maybe. Well, but thank you, you very you, much, you, Peter Carl. Rob. And also, <laughs> thank you to you, Susan. I want to say. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Don't be <laughs> me. Poor <laughs> Peter. He can't respect you to remember people like me. Lovely to chat to you this morning. Lovely to chat to you this morning.